Hayes could score 40 points in the national championship game. Then what, said Herrick. Well, granted, the Bulldogs are a field of 65 team, but nobody outside the Peach State is feeling that keen on their title chances, are they? <laughs> in Alabama, you remember the Tide, former number one, now on life support. Started the season ranked eighth in the Associated Press poll, rose to one in a couple weeks there. Then they have gone down like, uh, like one of those tech stocks. It got us thinking, uh, what are some other biggest disappointments this athletic season? Of course, there was the tie at the All-Star game, and then the Rams fans who couldn't believe that their team could go 7-9 and nine and miss the playoffs. And outside of Michael Waltrip, everybody was kind of bummed about the Daytona 500 being rained out. Let's get back to reality. Second half, Georgia up 8. Steve Thomas misses. Ezra Williams had 7 rebounds, 16 points. Bulldogs up a 10 spot. Now up 11, Chris Daniels to the aforementioned Jay Hayes. He was 10 of 17 from the field, 23 points. 32 seconds left. And Alabama with half a chance. Mo Williams, 15 of his 22, came after the break. Four-point game. Mark Godfrey hoping. Williams misses the free throw. And then makes the big steal. That's the deal. He'd be fouled on the left, make a free throw, and the tie loses. Georgia wins at 74. 69. Bama's sixth loss in eight games. Nebraska 22nd ranked Missouri after pleading not guilty to a felony assault charge earlier Tuesday. Ricky Clemens in uniform on court and shooting. Clemens hitting the three. Tigers up three. They're up nine when Clemens again. He likes Norm Stewart court. No Husker going to guard him, so he would shoot at 17 in the first half. He would finish up with six threes, and afterwards, Quinn Snyder talked about his shooting guard. It's good to see Ricky getting good looks, and, and you know he's been getting better, taking better shots, and tonight he made a few of them. Cruz is hard when they give you that much space, and uh, we, were, we were still patient in the second half. Clemens finished with 20. Missouri finished with 67 of the Huskers, 50. Mizzou, 13-0 at home this season. 15th rank Illinois, one and a half games out of first in the Big Ten, but with four homers left, including this dribble against Michigan State for Bill Self's club. First half, Illinois up two, Deron Williams to steal and the finish. Illinois up four. Still in the first, and Michigan State had some serious shooting problems. Hit only seven of 21 shots in the first half and committed 11 turnovers and breakfast not agreeing with the coach. More struggles. The brick. The brick. Five minute plus scoreless drought there. How about somebody making a bucket? Into the first Illinois inbounding and Nick Smith. His best Leitner. 31 17 at the half. Second half. More from the fighting line. ID Brown said he owed the fellas one after the loss at Purdue. He goes to Roger Powell for the alley oop and then well, it's Michigan State again. Missing and missing and missing. I don't think it's in anybody's head, although there are a lot more younger players playing, and I, I guess I would have to admit that I thought my younger players uh, looked a little starstruck tonight, uh, meaning just uh, the glaze in your eyes. 70 to 40, second worst loss for Tom Izzo with the Spartans. The Illini win their 15th straight homer. St. Louis took out Louisville at home. How about Cincinnati on the road? And if you're wondering what a billiken is, here you go. It's a symbol of good luck from 1900s. Manufactured as a banker's statue, but they were wild about 1910, 1911, and they're most lucky when stolen, which isn't good, I imagine, if they're a bank. Tony Bobbitt tries to cut the lead to one. It was four. He misses it. Chris Sloan, great effort. Look at it again, but perhaps better intellect. He's got the ball, and now he's yelling through. Time out! They get a timeout, save the possession with two seconds left. Bearcats down three. Missed it, and the Billikens have won! The Billikens have won! 58 to 55! Billikens have won. Brad Soderberg, nice win. St. Louis, 58-55. Embarrassed at Seton Hall over the weekend. They're over at Georgetown. Second half, Brandon Knight struggled with his shot. Can still find the open man, Julius Page. He had 10. Knight had 20. 7 of 12 from the field. 6 of 6 from the free throw line. This is from a guy who came in shooting 33 and 45% from those two spots. It's all Pittsburgh. 82-67. Hoyas, they may not make the Big East tournament.
Notre Dame, West Virginia, and I'm having kind of a major Harris Fiesta Bowl flashback, but we'll concentrate on basketball here. Chris Thomas shot fake, shot good. He had 13, 54, 52 Irish. Less than a minute. West Virginia down one. Kevin Pitsnoggle, the long three. Oh, the pride of every Mountaineer. West Virginia, their first lead of the game, up one, but 25 seconds to go. Thomas this time dishing to Danny Miller. Layup down low. He was just two of 13, but that was a good make. 56, 55 Irish. Miller missing the free throw. So the Mighty Mountaineer with a chance. Drew Shafino, the team's leading scorer, going to bring it down, but can you shoot a prayer against the team that has touchdown Jesus? No. Notre Dame wins it 56-55. Johnny's at 17th ranked Syracuse. Mike Jarvis club last in the Big East in three-point shooting, and you're going to see why. <laughs> Early on, Marcus Hatton misses the three, and that's going to be our corner theme down there. Hakeem Ward, what a night. He had nine points, six rebounds, three blocks, six turnovers. Hatton Loses it, and Billy Edelin misses the layup. Mello, Carmelo Anthony, the rookie, led Syracuse with 21. Last seconds of the half, and Hatton's prayer. No, it's not Sunday. St. John's, 4 of 19 from 19-9, trailed by six at the break. Second half, Hatton profiting on one of Syracuse's 26 turnovers. He had 22. Meanwhile, the aerial display continues below. Tied at 42, Hatton hits a three. Oh, my, 9 of 25 from the field, just 2 of 11 from the three. Another Hatton steal. And now it's the Elijah Ingram portion of the show. He was shooting 40% from the arc before this game. He went two for 20, and St. John's went nine of 41 from distance. Len Elmore, help us understand. Well, should St. John stop shooting a three? I, I tell you, if you shoot nine for 41, you ought, ought to think about it. But at the end of the day, you've got to be able to mix threes with some inside game. This is all about inside-out complement. And St. John's against the zone. They certainly need to work the ball around before looking at a three. Syracuse wins 66-60. Jarvis, his club loses for the fourth time in five games. Duke has won 25 straight homers. Last loss at Cameron two years ago to Maryland. Opening tip, Nick Kaner Medley, and that's the way to quiet the crazies. First half, Maryland down one. Steve Blake looking to create and addition to Ryan Randall. Maryland up one, under one minute and a half, and J.J. Redick. Oh, don't be fooled by the rocks that he's got. Duke up by four at the half. Six of the last seven meetings have been won by the team that trail at halftime. Second half, Terps down five. Blake struggled, but not there. Maryland down to do shot clock running on Duke now and Reddick and you know it's don't uh, I'm not gonna go there again long three-pointer Duke up seven Reddick had 17 Duke now down five and Dante Jones averaging 23 in his last three homers he had 21 and a little shimmy under three and a half to go Blake worked last time we found Randall on the highlight and it works that time Maryland down deuce Randall had 12 Duke up four shot clock running down crowd Oh, nothing like a sixth man. Under 15 seconds left. Duke ball up three. Daniel Ewing drives and loses it. Maryland recovers. They don't have any timeouts. Stevie Blake, two for ten from the field, and well, that's not one of the two. He airs it and Greta could be fouled and Duke wins it 75 to 70 avenge that loss earlier this season. Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, Bedlam and Norman. Cowboys won the first meeting with the Sooners. Bit of controversy though. Victor Williams hitting a shot as the shot clock wound down. Victor, he thought it was all good. Calvin Sampson, the Sooner coach, protested all for naught. OSU won it 48-46. Now. We go back to living in the present. Wednesday, first half, first possession, first basket for OU. Hollis Price gets it at the shot clock buzzer. He had 22 after just six in Stillwater. Then Qantas White at the shot clock again gets it to go. Cowboys score 48 again. The Sooners got 64 this time. Second rank Kentucky at Arkansas. Cats own the nation's longest winning streak at 14 games, but Tubby's 0 6 at Bud Walton Arena. That's no relation to Bill. Second half, Eric Ferguson with the razor cut to the hoop. He had 13 points. Lead cut to five. Kentucky turns on the defense for 17 turnovers. Gerald Fitch, 17 points, three steals. Head to Eric Daniels, the only other cat in double figures. He had 10. That's part of a 12 0 run. And then more blue grass. Keep Bogans to Fitch. Shots like that's why Kentucky's leading the SEC in field goal percentage. And although Kentucky was just 3 of 14 from distance, Fitch 2 of 5 from the arches, 66-50 Kentucky. 
Memphis and Louisville Rick Pitino's cards perfect at home this season 11 and 0 but at 839 Eastern in the second half Francisco Garcia it's the off balance jumper. Louisville up three with 1052 to go and then they went dry first though Antonio Burks breaking the press coast to coast gets the lane we're tied at 59 904 Eastern Reese Gaines misses the three Garcia the follow attempt he had 17 that was not two of them 913 Eastern Gaines from long distance that won't go he's 5 of 18 from the field finally at 915 Eric Brown ends the drought without a field goal more than nine minutes of game time 36 minutes of real time and Gaines then swatted away the bill shot just 36 percent Tino and Louisville lose it 80 73. Big 12. Well, now Colorado put it on Kansas last month as Boulder, so the Beakers were sort of waiting for the Buffs' return trip to the fog. First half, out of playing matchup zone. You see it there, and watch Wayne Simeon. He's just going to sneak in, and Kirk Heinrich in an alley. Simeon's poop. Mm. He's a big fella, hard to miss. He had 21 points. KU up 18. Later in the first, KU the lead down to a dozen, but shot clock winding down. Kirk Heinrich showing patience, draws four defenders. What's he, he's just going to share because that's what Iowa kids do to Nick Collison, who finished with 24. Hawks lead 46 38 half. Second half, they're up 21. So much for Ralphie's offense. Heinrich, the slam, he had 14. Kansas wins at 94 87. 14 drink Xavier at LaSalle. Musketeers perfect in A10 road play. We all know that fella, David West, carries the biggest musket, but Romain Sato was cock block and ready to rock. The three there, followed by a fast break to Sato, coming off a career high 34 against Rhode Island Saturday. Goes for 35 Wednesday, 11 straight Xavier points, five threes in the second half, 10 of 17 from the field, 10 of 10 from the line. Xavier's 10th straight victory, 93 71 winners. Gary Neal with 37. Three road games, second half, Purdue down four. Lavelle Blanchard armed and dangerous. He had 20, Michigan up a touchdown. Next Michigan possession after a boiler score, freshman Daniel Horton, oh, he's turned on. Had a career high 31. More maize and blue. Bernard Robinson has the ball in the corner. Two defenders shadowed right there. They jump out on Blanchard. Chris Hunter says nobody wants to guard me. Michigan wins 78-67. Taking over first in the Big Ten Conference Championship. All the on probation Wolverines have to play for. Rutgers, 24th ranked UConn Husky men currently with a zero game win streak. Jerome Coleman driving to the hole. He's blocked by Emeka Okafor. Now watch Coleman trying to get back. He's hustling, but he gets there just in time to foul Ben Courton on a three pointer. Let's make it a four point play. UConn, eight of 13 from the three point line. And then on the break, Tony Robertson to the hole. He had 24 and a foul shot. UConn, 25 of 26 from the line. They win it 87 to 70. They're not an Owen Hartford this season. Number 19 Mississippi State at Auburn. Will the Bulldogs be looking ahead to Sunday's dribble at Kentucky? No, because with the win they get sole possession of first in the SEC West. Timmy Bowers had 17 of his career high 25 in the first half and then in the second half Mario Austin is scrumming for it and getting it. He had 14 points, 12 boards. Mississippi State wins at 63-46. Auburn in the tank. Losers of five of their last seven. Let's go with Wake Forest Georgia Tech. Josh Howard National Player of the Year candidate. Well, Brad Doherty. He's quite a fan. A player like Josh Howard, I think the thing that stands out about him to me as an analyst is his ability to let the game come to him. Uh, I've seen him at various times throughout the season. I watch him play tonight against Georgia Tech, same thing. Throughout the season, it's been big plays by Josh Howard that's made the difference for this basketball team. They haven't shot it great every night, but he's played big every night. Howard let it come to him to the tune of 14 points in the first half. Late first half, tech down eight. Chris Bosch with the jam. He had 13. Wake Forest up just six and a half. Second half, Georgia Tech nailing some threes. Marvin Lewis hit that one, then returned to coach the Bengals. Jared Jack in all. Part of a night where Tech made 10 threes, but Wake went back to Howard as they should. Peter Daniels misses, but yeah, here comes Howard to take care of business. Howard at 24, Wake wins at 75-67, first place alone in the ACC. Josh Howard, another great all-around game. It's been the story of his career to show how complete a player he is. Thursday, he joined these three Duke players as the only ACC players in history to tally 1,000 career points, 500 rebounds, 200 assists, 200 steals, 100 block shots, and 50 boxes of popcorn. Dwayne Wade, number 12, Marquette, coming off Saturday's loss to Louisville, hosting Charlotte first half. Todd Townsend misses, and Dwayne Wade doesn't. Later in the first, Wade anticipates and 
the steal and the finish. 35-25 Golden Eagles at this point. Second half now, it's Scott Merritt with the steal. Ahead to Wade, and this one will be good for two. Thank you for it. Golden Eagles up 16. They win 75-67. Marquette shot 51% from the field. Cal trying to sweep UCLA for the first time since the 93-94 season. Beat them 80-69 back on January 25th, and Joe Ship said it felt good beating them. I wish we could have beaten them by 40. Oh, boy. Late second half, Cal down one. Meet Tamir. You got it. Cal up to 72-70. Same score, next UCLA possession. TJ Cummings getting the board. You know, Danny played two. Cummings, 17 points. We're knotted at 72. Last chance for Cal. Ryan Weathers, who had 21 points, was 9 of 25. That's one of the 16 misses. We're going the other way. Jason Capono. No, and the putback. Sorry, we're going to overtime. 72-all in the bonus basketball. And Joe Ship. Cal for three. They're not up 40, they're up three. So you gotta protect the lead. You slay down 75, 74. Ray Young missing. Second chance, got it. Blow a whistle, he is fouled. He'll go to the line. Down one, he's got two free throws. 37 seconds left. Oh, the drama, oh, the pressure. Young got 18 points and he was four of eight from the line. That would be one he missed and that would be the other. Oh, Lord. No training table for him. After Cal missed a free throw, UCLA down one chance to win. Dijon Thompson misses, but after it's ping-ponged around, Thompson, loose ball. Oh, so smooth. UCLA of 76-75. After a timeout, 3.3 left. Cal inbounding, and Tamir hounded. Not good. UCLA, 76-75. Their first Pac-10 win since the first week of conference play. Four Pac-10, we go across town. USC hosting Stanford. Julius Barnes, 4-4. Ties it up, he hits 16. Still tied, Matt Harris, the rebound, and Eric Craven. Oh, he's sneaky. Steals it, and then the reverse up and under. Take another look at that one. Craven, the steal, the scoop, and the score. He had 14. I'll take that. Oh, and then the ball. Next possession for Stanford. Matt Lodick to Justin Davis. Fall. Stanford up one. Davis had 20 points on 7 of 11 shooting. Lodick open for three. Deep three. He had 12. Stanford's ninth straight 20 win season. 73 67. Highlights from a game in Akron without LeBron James. Zips hosting Miami, Ohio. Juby Johnson tied up at the buzzer for the win. Ron Harper, your thoughts? He's a Red Hawk. Miami, Ohio, 9-4 in the Mac.